Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And let's go on. The only piece of data that we have coming up, which is going to be in uh, Eurozone industrial production, that'll be uh, coming up, but that's going to come out at the top of the hour, this next hour that we're coming up. And then as we come into the day, we will have a uh, core CPI out of the U.S., along with the uh, Cleveland CPI. Bear with me. So that'll be the real mover is gonna be CPI out of the US. And then of course, uh, top of this hour is gonna be your zone industrial production. With that, let's go on and um, take a look where we stand here in FX. We are seeing a little bit of a jump up here in Apple here, you can see here in um, pre-market hours, definitely pre-market. Let's go and take a look where we are in uh, Euro. So a little bit of a pop back here and you not a whole lot, but a little bit. And then we're kind of giving a little bit of that back. Take a look where we stand here with cable. Wow. Cable was really surprised and we've even continued to push this even further. I mean, I thought, I think our buy chart resistance today was right there around 3660 or so right here. I mean, I can't believe how this thing is completely turned around uh, with some pretty good gusto to say the least. If you look here, I remember, covering this in the Asian, I was doing the Asian analysis. This is eclipsed like the last, I think it's either five or six trading sessions. I mean, that uh, just yesterday's bar. Take a look at the Aussie. Uh, we saw a, a bit of a pop back yesterday, but you can see here, it's not like the cable is adding on to gains, but pair back just slightly. Same thing here with the Kiwi. Take a look at dollar cad. This ended up giving up decent push of gains, but it's trying to make a stand here, <clears throat> just below, just below 27. And then on dollar peso, this um, unceremoniously gave up a decent part of its gains, just like what it looked like. It's going to try and make a push up in here a couple of days prior. And then looking at the dollar yen, this looked like it was really trying to take off. It might even try to push this upper area here and quickly slid back. Now, we did go in and close. Sub sub three, but um, we're trying to find that support. And actually, I think our bias chart support today is actually 352. So it looks like they went actually right there and held. I think our bias chart support is 352. Hang on. Yeah, there it is. We supported 352, and that's today's low, 352. Well, you can see what's coming across that touches these bodies. There, there's your support. Um, take a look at the cash dollar index. Just a very super tight range, not doing a whole lot. With that, we'll go in and take a look um, where we stand at indexes. And we did want to get that break yesterday. I ended up sharing, I put it also on Twitter about <sighs> Watching out, you know, on this dip, support at the 50% with support also at 12795 Now, we did take, take a dip a little bit lower beyond that, but uh, no way I thought we were going to turn around and recover all the way back like this. This is a bit of a surprise. We'll see if the market stifles itself a little bit here, but you can see here that we got that break below that key 12900 You can see here, but then we came right back with a hammer. Now, it was still below the 12900 and it stayed that way, but finally in Asia, we broke above it. And I'm kind of paring back just a little bit. We'll see how this plays out, but still believe it's a bit susceptible. The only thing is I think maybe the market may try and hang its hat on, uh, I think on Thursday, Biden's supposed to announce um, like all this extra spending or something like that. 
that might be what's trying to still hang on. But once again, this break, I would have thought that the, there's a lot of exposure too with all the craziness that had happened in the Capitol and that there is still uh, potential for this stuff to go on and um, uh, happen, although it's going to be, uh, they're calling in a lot of National Guard, and they're actually going to be, um, uh, I think they said, I saw that, armed with um, um, lethal weapons is what they called it, lethal weapons. So, But there's concerns that you could see things at individual state capitals. So once again, I would think that there'd be a risk to that. We'll see. Market, like I said, technically it's popped right back up in here. Um, so we'll see how this goes and plays itself out. And that's been the way to go to just going to see how we hold up technically. Um, we will go and bring this back here. Just take a quick look, see um, where's gold. Gold really took a little bit of a drubbing, but it's kind of held its own. You can see here a bit of a hammer from uh, Monday. After a pretty good steady pullback here, crude oil. Uh, I thought this would have once we got. Remember, we I said we had resistance at, I think it was fifty three oh seven, and look, we still pushed even further. What well, looks like we got up to what fifty three eighty eight. So wow, it is forming a little bit of a gravestone doji, but the market's still young, still a long ways before we close. But um, at least for now, forming a gravestone doji. We'll see how that plays itself out. With that being said, we'll uh, go to the news for the day. So Aussie and New Zealand dollars resumed bull run. Our bonds outperformed. The Aussie and New Zealand dollars resumed their uptrend on Wednesday as dovish comments from Federal Reserve members undermined the U.S. dollar, while local bonds also managed to outperform the U.S. counterparts. The Aussie bounced to 77.75. One moment. And away from a 76.66 low touched at the start of the week. The next chart buries are 77.98 and the recent peak of 78.19. The QE firm to 72.30 from daily's trough of Monday's uh, trough at 71.48. The currency took a knock when a couple of Fed presidents downed the risk of an early tap tapering of asset purchases, helping spark a rally in treasuries. That was mirrored in the Australian bond market's 10-year yields eased a touch to 1.09%. Uh, Treasuries also sold off last week on expectations of a Democratic-controlled U.S. Senate would allow a much larger fiscal spending program. Aussie bonds managed to fare better than their U.S. counterparts, and the outperformance of odd rates against the U.S. Treasuries is justified in our view. Given the relative fiscal outlooks of the two countries, said Jack Chambers, we think that this can persist and the 10-year spread can go negative. You know, the Australian bonds issuance over the next six months was was planned at $76.5 billion and 153.4 uh, down from $153.5 billion, and that's Aussie dollars. Australian Chief of Financial Management is due to outline its latest borrowing plans, which could indicate a syndication of new bonds with uh, the three-year yields. Pin there uh, uh, 10 basis points by buying for the RBA. Uh, the dollar nurse losses on Wednesday is a retreat in the U.S. yield sapped momentum from the, its recent rebound and investors cautiously resume bets that it can resume sliding. Benchmark 10-year yields fell more than uh, six basis points uh, after a 10-month high on Tuesday, and the turnaround snuffed out a three-day streak for the dollar. Against the euro, it posted its sharpest decline 
uh, um, fell more than a month and dropped more than 1% against the pound, as also boosted by the Bank of England governor talking down the prospect of negative rates. The pullback in yields pushed the dollar below 104 Japanese yen to trade at 103.66 yen by mid-session. People are de uh, debating whether the market uh, and market drivers that are is to be are going to uh, be back towards the interest rate differential, said Paul Mackel. We still think there's going to be the ebb and flow of risk appetite that has been dominant feature in the currency markets for the past few quarters. He added with the outlook for a dollar soggy, but not the global growth returns. So you can see where we're at, kind of just sitting here. We did go and get above that 12900, which is key. We'll see how that holds up. Let's go on and go to the analysis. We'll take a look where we stand here with the euro. So the euro posted a minor bounce back rally on Tuesday. Resistance on Wednesday will be 2247 with support at 2123. And like I said, we did get a okay little bounce back here. It still was relatively tight range, but it's not like we're adding on to it. We're just trading a little bit softer as we move into the European session. Take a look where we sit on cable. Like I said, this was really a surprise. This just is crazy. It eclipsed six uh, the prior six trading sessions, and we've even juiced it up a little bit more. The cable posted a solid rally on Tuesday, eclipsing the prior six sessions. Resistance on Wednesday would be 36.84, with support at 36.07. Something else. Wow, look at that. You would think it'd be up as high as here at 37.03, which is where they look like so they ran out of gas. I put 36.84. We are trading at 36.80. Uh, moving on to the Aussie dollar. So the Aussie dollar rallied back to eclipse the prior two sessions. You can see that. One and two. You see that? Um, resistance on Wizard would be 78.05 with support at 77.24. Onto the Kiwi. Now the Kiwi bounced back from Tuesday's lows to close above 72 cents. Resistance will be 72.48 with support at 
going to the dollar CAD. The dollar CAD gave back a majority of its gains closing toward 27 cents. Support on Wednesday will be 26.74 with resistance at 27.49. Obviously still remains bearish. On to the dollar peso. The dollar peso saw gains evaporate on Tuesday. Support on Wednesday will be 1967 with resistance at 1996. Well, same here, we're trading a very tight range. This was like, well, I couldn't believe it just gave those gains so quickly. This thing looked like it was gonna to start to try and work a little bit higher. Surprise, surprise. On the dollar yen, the dollar yen in, uh, relinquished gains, closing sub four, uh, uh, 0400. Resistance on Monday is going to be 405. We supported 352, and that was a low for the day, the 352. And to the dollar index. Dollar index uh, saw recent gains disappear on Tuesday. Support on Wednesday will be 89.72 with resistance at 90.50. And on to the QBN. Well, we saw that dip back, and then yesterday we kind of stayed within the range of the prior body. No real changes even here for today. Resistance is going to be this close here, and that would be 75.11. With support. We did have that 7451 yesterday. Um, Won't move a whole lot lower, it's going to be 74.44. On to the euro pound. Boy, look, this is, someone was asking about this the other day, and I was saying that it's just like an electrocardiogram with this, you know, Look up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, now heading down. Uh, support is going to come actually right where we're at here, right there. And I guess this would have to hold right there. Last bastion, which is going to be 88.99. And resistance right now is going to be right there. 89.53. And on to the Euro odd. And this has been important, this 57 area here. 
uh, we're pressing a little bit below it, not a whole lot, but um, still going to say that's going to be a support here, which is going to be, I should just move just a hair lower, just to 57, but this whole area is very key. Huge weekly support here. With resistance, if we turn things around, 57.86. Onto the Euro Kiwi. Down here, the support we had for yesterday was 6902. Let's see on a two hour chart where we stand here. Right there. See the touch of this wick and this wick here. It's going to be 68.71. And resistance coming right across there, which would be Aussie and still hanging around near these highs. Close going to be that closing high there, which was 80.70. This has just been pretty phenomenal. And this, remember how dead this has been over the course of probably the last year and a half? Like it wouldn't go anywhere. Now it just has woken up like bananas and really responded. Um, Support's going to be right there, 79.68. Make sure we get that dip, but that's what would come in. And on the guppy, it's going to be the prior high here, which would be 42.69. With support right there. Oh, that's a long ways off. It'd actually be this body right there if we dip back, which is going to be right there, 41.15. And on to Sterling Nod. This thing has been done a bit of a turnaround here. Resistance is going to be that body right there. You can see that confluence is here with this wick. It'll be right there. 77.38. Still have a ways to go. With support coming in right there. You can see this lower wick here and that wick here. Both those intersect here. But if that's still, we're moving much higher. You can see how we're taking off. So you'd have to adjust that here and the wick on this bar you see right there almost comes in place with this wick here so it would have to be right there 7561 still quite a ways lower compared to where we are right now but it would be 7561 I saw Apple in this pre-market kind of pop up a little bit above 130, but we're right here, 2960. This is a very key area here. You take a look here. That 129. Take a look here with Microsoft. Below 216. Amazon. We came off those lows at 3095. Um, Mark is still relatively weaker, though. Take a look at Google. We did break that trend line. NVIDIA, still below 551, been turned away here. And look at Facebook. Wow, this is key. Look at this. We broke, not only did we break 267, 
this was this area to hold here. Just like you see how Amazon, it defended the area. You see here, even with Microsoft here, it defended back here. But look at Facebook, not, it's it's going low. Of course, we've got the whole news, the whole Twitter ban, Facebook ban, but that has really led to this trying to put a dragon. Generally, although it's running different, is, you know, is uh, Facebook is more of a um, momentum type move for the, um, for the NQ. Generally, it's going to see it, it, it drives the short term momentum, although that's not, you know, the case. And I guess it's looking at singularly. Um, when we move back to the Uh, yeah, Didier says, can you take a look at Tesla? Yeah, we were just going to go to Tesla. I'm just moving over to that chart. Now, looking at Tesla, we saw that dip um, over here. We saw that dip here, but we've kind of bounced back. Bounced back. Now, the key would be we would, we'd need to close above that open really actually closed just above this area, but still holding up relatively well. Um, looking on the two hour chart. In order for things to get better, we need to close. Well, not because this is a two hour chart, so make short term. We need to get above, if we can get back above 880, 867 on a two hour close, things will look well, but that's gonna be the area where it's gonna run into some resistance, which is once again, 867. When you look here, you can see the, how significant that is. You see the bodies and even here, the wick that got above it, but look how they went back up to 867, the pair back pair back a little bit. We'll have to see, but I mean, this thing is still looking great. It's just that you would get additional momentum if you get a two hour close above 867. On the daily though, it's still looking pretty good. I'm saying is, is if we'd have seen a little bit more fall through here or seen this pull back, that another thing is key is gonna be on the daily. You don't want it to close below 816. Seems like a long ways away, but I mean, we could dip back. That would open the door for a little bit further push, which would push us then to right there, 747. Look at the PayPal, still holding up okay. You see there on the daily. And take a look at the. Um, I was trying to call them the pandemic plays. So PayPal is one. Obviously, um, Move this back. There's Peloton. Nice pull back here. Zoom. Now that's had its own problems. I wouldn't, although it's a little bit of a pandemic play, but it's been weaker for a while. But look how it's responding back yesterday. But as I mentioned, eBay, look at eBay. So we even broke over that trend line. But that's where we stand here. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Tesla still looks pretty good overall. And then going back to um, the indices, you can see here, got this little bit of resistance right here at this 12, 925-ish area here. We'll see how this plays out, but uh, it was key for them to get back about 12,900. Does still seem, it would seem a bit stretched, but as I mentioned previously, or yesterday, the Fang Man hasn't really matched up with what the overall index has been. If you were to be, if you were looking where Fang Man is now, 
you would think that we should probably be right around here in this area. Like I said, now you look and say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. You see here, so we probably should be like, if you're going by with what Fang Man's been doing, we'd probably be right there. Not making new lows, but, you know, not making these kind of highs. So it's kind of odd that we're still here. We'll see how this week plays out. If and next week is the inauguration, there's a lot of worries, a lot of worries and angst. So I would think that this would come off based on that. I'm not saying it comes off necessarily today, but I think that it would be susceptible to come back and make a challenge these lows again. We'll see how that plays out. But anyway, that's what we got. And thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar. And we'll see you in the chat room.